it's in my head 24 7. There's nothing else I can think of. I don't, I don't think about nothing else. If, if, let's see, I'm just curious, curiously fascinated with it, and I can't stop thinking about it. Everything I do in my life is, is related to this. I don't do nothing else if it's not got to do with fighting. You know what I mean? And that, that, that is why, you know what I mean? To, to be true, is that all, all, all you've got to do is show up. Is that not unhealthy? Um, I don't know. Do I look unhealthy? Take a look at this physique. I'm in phenomenal shape in body and mind. To me, what's unhealthy is living an unhealthy life. To me, what's unhealthy is getting up and going through the same day, every day of your life, nine to five, in an office or in a, you know what I mean? That, that's unhealthy. That beats your mind. I don't, I don't work. I, what do I, I love what I do. And that's why I'm doing what I love. You know what I mean? That's why, that's why it's become a career for me because I love it. I love what I do. So I don't think it's unhealthy. I, I, I feel good in my mind. You know what I mean, it's, it's, my, it's my life. Stare at your past and you'll end up staying there. It's okay to look back and admire it, but you carry on. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of staring, staring back at it. You know what I mean? I'm getting lost back there. There's people say you can, people say a loss can make or break a fighter, but trust me, a win can also make or break a fighter because they get comfortable with a with a win. People can get comfortable with a with a win, and 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 slack off then, slack off on the training, slack off on the diet. They've won one. They're winners now. That's not me, you know, you sleep, on a, you sleep on a win and you'll wake up with a loss. So I just carry on, keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why this turnaround is so good for me. Vegas, straight away, the fighting Irish head to the fighting capital. It's, it's perfect. Continue on this path, the freight train straight to the top. If you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences, and I don't shy away from them. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <coughs> become reality. I knew he would overextend, and I knew I'd catch him. So Mystic Max strikes again. <laughs> I believed in it. I, I had very few people who told me that. I had a small, small, small group of people that would tell me something like that. Other than that, it was just me telling myself. Yep. So if someone came up to me and told me that all the way back then, I'd say you're damn right. Just knocked them out. I picked around John. Yeah, I said this. I'm sure you are probably all thinking in your head. This guy is talking absolute dribble. He's not gonna do what he says he's gonna do. You are probably all sitting there thinking that. But now here we are again, and I done what I said I was gonna do. I feed off this. I feed off this. I love this stuff. This is what gives me energy. Saying I'm gonna do something, saying putting it out there for the world to see, and then going out and doing it. There's no better feeling in the world than that. And it's as easy as that. Say what you're gonna do, and go and do it. Chasing your dream, and when you're, when you're working hard, chasing something you love, and, and, um, and completely dedicated, it just, it just happens. You, don't, you, don't, you can't really no, notice it, you know, even still to this day. I'm in, a, in an amazing position in, in my life. Um, but I'm still, I'm still working like I'm not. I'm still working like I'm not in this position. Absolutely. I'm still working like none of this is even, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just something I love to do and I just keep pushing and keep working hard. I can't pinpoint an exact moment for you, but yep. if, if anything, I always felt like it was happening way back then. And, and now it is happening, but now I almost feel like it's not happening. You know what I mean? And I wanna, <laughs> I wanna push to, to something else. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm always striving to push forward, so. I'm enjoying the fruits of my hard work. Nobody works harder than me inside the octagon, outside the octagon. I am a workhorse, so I am going to enjoy the benefits of this life. I am going to get myself a big mansion in Las Vegas. I am going to get the soft top cars. I am going to bring my whole team out. I am going to spoil them and give them this life. Big steaks, that size, we're eating every single night each. We're eating good, we're living good. 
it's it's human nature. Some people will sit and take positivity from that, but they will look at that and, and take inspiration and inspire. It will inspire them to go and push for that. Others will shell up and critique it and, and, and be negative towards it. But one thing is for sure, those people will stay where they are. The people who take inspiration from it will rise up and, and also one day experience that life. So this is this is human nature. Some go one way, some go the other way. But I am I am enjoying my money, my hard-earned money that I that I have dedicated my life to. Hard work pays. I put in a hell of a lot of work all throughout this build-up in the fight. I pumped out more content than anybody. More content than Fox. More content than ESPN. More content than B uh, BT Sport. More content than everybody on the Mag Live on my own channels. I'm building this media empire now myself, and we pumped out the content. I'm very proud of how it went. We consistently daily movies I was releasing. You know, from from like a month ago, every single day. You know what I mean? Nobody's doing that. So. I'm very proud of it and, and I'm very, like, the work pays, hard work pays, that's why I'm, I'm sitting at the top. I, I put it all on the line, I show up, I perform, and I get the results from that, so. Did you ever have, let's call it a normal job, Connor, mm -hmm. a nine to five? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, the Irish thing is to get into a trade straight away. I was no different as soon as uh, I finished school. I was always getting pestered, what are you doing with your life? Are you doing this, doing that? Um, they didn't know what it was, they didn't know what MMA was, they didn't know what none of this, they didn't know I could make a career out of it. As far as they were concerned, my man and dad I'm talking about, as far as they were concerned, I was just getting into a cage and fighting with some other guy. They didn't know nothing about it. No one did, really. But I knew, you know what I mean? I knew. But, uh, um, and then I, got a, I ended up getting a trade, just to keep them quiet. Because I used to get, have a lot, a lot of fights with me dad, a lot of What fights. trade did you get? I ended up getting a trade as a plumber. Um, literally up in the back arse and nowhere up in Wicklow, the Wicklow Mountains. And funny enough, that, that, that site was one of the biggest sites in Europe, Kiltiernan. It was right at that skiing place. Huge. And now it's just abandoned. Now it's just deserted. So I used to go up there at 6 o'clock, five, 5 o'clock in the morning I was on that M50. I used to have to walk to the N4, about half an hour from my house, wait for some Limerick guy that I didn't even know. He'd drive on the N4 and I'd have to flag him down. Nightmare, yeah. Two hours down on the M50, two hours back. Literally 14 hour days and I was the, I was the first year, so I was the I had to go and do everything. I had to go to the shop. I had to go and get this and get that. So I always had trouble with that, and I was like, this isn't for me. This is not for me. How long then, did you last? Uh, I lasted 18, 18 months, still. But it was tough, you know what I mean? Uh, just, it wasn't, it wasn't the life for me, you know what I mean? And then, and then John said, because I was training with John as well at the time, and then John got on touch and says, uh, I have a show, I'm running a show, I'd like to fight on it. And then that was it. I just packed it in, didn't show up. My dad used to come in and punch the head on me and, and like try and drag me out of bed. And I just wouldn't go, you know what I mean? I had an uproar for a good few years when I'm over, but... Um, and that was it, I just pa packed it in, quit, and then focused on training. And that's... I knew, I knew, I knew what was going to happen, I knew I was going to get here. They didn't. It was a lot of stressful years, you know what I mean? A lot of tough times. Um, but I proved them wrong. I proved myself right. I was always... They had that set way. Every gym had that set way of doing things. Don't do it this way do it that way. So that was just a normal thing that I thought. I thought just people just have their own set way and you must do it that way. You must stand this way, you must kick this way, you must punch this way. But with John, when I went to John, and I met, met my coach John Cabinet at Straight Blast Gym, it wasn't like that. He had a more open mind and he encouraged different movements. And I'd never experienced that before. I'd never heard a coach say that to me before. And that stuck in my head and I thought to myself, you know, this guy, is, is, is thinking outside the box, you know what I mean? That he has a vision that everything works and, and he, he encourages every movement because ultimately there is a time and a place for every single move. So I just, ha I just knew when, when I met John and I, when he spoke, it made complete sense to me and that was it, I stuck with him and he stuck with me and the rest is history. Gratitude is one of the most strongest forms of, of, of power in attracting good things you know if you truly feel grateful for the things in your life I always felt grateful for even the small things I always used to celebrate the small things now I might be celebrating the bigger things but I always celebrate every little good thing that would happen to me in my life even before I had any kind of money or any of that I would celebrate and I would feel grateful for it and it just gave me more and this is exactly the same thing that's happening right now I still remain grateful and more comes Muhammad Ali was a guy that done what had not been done before. 
changed the face, not, not only the face of his game, but the face of the world. You know, he was, a, he was outspoken, he fought, he fought for what he believed in, and that, uh, he was charismatic, he, 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 he was a, a legend, a hero. And I, I, I looked up to him, one of my first heroes was Muhammad Ali. Uh, when I was 11 years old, there was a group of people and they tried to attack me, and a fight broke out. And it was just me and one guy. Before, before everyone else jumped in on me, but we were fighting each other, and I slipped a punch, and I, I and I, I shuffled my shoulders and said Muhammad Ali, <laughs> and threw a shot, and he rolled under the shot but fell into a knee, and I ended up on top of him. So I'm at the calling myself Muhammad Ali, and I'm punching him in the head, and then somebody came in and tried to kick me, and then a whole group of them came in, and, and we, it was just a big fight, but it was me against six of them, and I ended up getting my ass whooped. But, but that first guy, you, you whipped him out and I, said, I, 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 I done the Ali shuffle. I'm only 11 years old, I done the Ali shuffle, threw a left hook. He rolled under the left hook, which if, it was good of him to roll. He saw it coming and rolled under it, but he rolled right into a knee. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was prepared. I was, I was studying tape. So, uh, no, so definitely Muhammad Ali was a hero of mine. People, I understand more, a, a, young, a young boy. Dreaming of putting on the artist jersey, or, or yeah, dreaming of putting on his, his favorite ball team's uh, jersey and that crest, and lifting that cup, you know, this, this is my crest. These gloves right here, these UFC gloves, you know. Be the first man, be the first artist man to put these on, to lace these up, and get in and do the job. Now, honestly, no one can take that away from me, no matter what. Listening to laughter all my career. Yeah. I've been listening to them laugh my whole career. They've been laughing. What? An Irish man win a win a Cage Warriors world title? Hell no. You serious? An Irish man? An Irish man win a fight in the UFC? Hell no. Laugh. Laughs all around. An Irish okay, you gotta win. Now he wants to win a world title? Hell no, he's all talk, he's all hype, he's a joke. Laughter all around at the Joker. Then the Joker goes and wins the world title. Now he wants to win a second world title. More laughter. Listen, I've been, I don't know, mate, the sound of laughter and the sound of doubt motivates me. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. I seek that. I don't feel no doubt or, or, or I don't feel no, I don't feel that going to fight in any of these other UFC bombs right now. They need to rise up. Right now they're, they're down there. I've got this situation where people are truly doubting me like they doubted me at the very, very beginning. And that's motivating for me. That's what's going to drive me to the gym when I need to go to the gym and to put in that work to get that win. So that's where we're at right now. Everything has been a learning experience for me, and I, and I take everything as a as a as a learning experience, and I look to grow from it. And, sure. And and you know what? That's why I keep growing. I don't like to think too far ahead. So you haven't thought alternative careers? No, I don't careers, like thinking or... too far ahead. People set like goals, long distance goals and shit. That's too much for me. I already feel like I'm living it. And then I just carry on doing that, you know, carry on day by day, already living the final goal, the goal of being the world champion. I already carry myself like I'm a world champion. I already speak like I'm a world champion. Martial arts life will give you a discipline, will give you dedication, will give you a drive that you won't get nowhere else. So whatever these kids that come in that size with their parents, whatever they decide to do, whether they decide to conquer the martial arts world, the fighting game, or whether they want to go and conquer the business world, whatever they decide to do, training for combat sport, training martial arts, will give them that confidence to go and excel in anything. So people can, can criticize about it all they want, but the results speak for themselves. And seeing these little kids come in this size, it's, it, it's good times, good times ahead, I see.